it's that time where uh, we, we can talk about peptides in a serious way. We can talk about hormones. And this was the land of freaks five years ago. And there's just so much science now that didn't exist where we can say it's real. But I got to ask you guys the tough question. Sometimes I have to leave the United States in order mm. to get access to certain treatments or to get a certain peptide and all of that. Do you sense that we're going to have like a regulatory parity where, where there, there's some license for cutting edge biohacking that we can do? I'm kind of curious, how, how so, do we make innovation happen faster? Yeah, so we're working on this, working on this inside of, uh, of, uh, of Fountain Life. Um, we have an edge program where we're working to get investigational new drug approval, IND applications, yeah, sure. where our members can participate in stem cells, in rapamycin, in quercetin, yeah. right, in in uh, in all of these areas, and you can go to uh, again at lifeforce.com and, and learn about it. Today, you're right. Uh, most people go to uh, go to Panama, Mexico, Costa Rica, the Bahamas to get treatments because we're not. It's not legal here in the United States. Yeah, um, and. And the FDA plays an important right, uh, role in regulating uh, how risky things are. Uh, and, and we're going to see over the next three to five years, the science data help us demonstrate and prove, right? And that's one of the things we, we want to do with Fountain Life and sister company Cellularity that Bob Hurry is, is the chairman mm -hmm. and CEO of that's in cellular medicine, is if you can wrap the science around it so that everybody's being uploaded every year and then if you're getting your stem cells or exosomes and being uploaded next year, you can start to look at the actual data to see what does it mean? Because it has been the Wild West. People go and anecdotally, they feel better. But show me the double blind science study. And it isn't there yet. But uh, mm -hmm. we'll, we'll get there. Uh, and at the same time, uh, there's enough bent twigs, enough signal that there is real value in these cutting edge therapies that people will skirt the system and go overseas to get access to it. It's, it's that time where people with some meaningful amount of disposable income can do this. With cell phones, Peter, you and I have talked about this. Your whole track on technology and abundance talks about how things are ridiculously expensive 30 years ago are commonplace, like mobile phones. Yeah, when, it, when it's expensive and doesn't work well, the rich people use it. And by the time it works amazingly well and it's dirt cheap, the entire world uses it. And it'll be the same well, thing with a lot of the biotech. It, it's amazing. And, and I, I want to double down on something you said there, uh, Peter. mRNA as a technology is one of the most promising anti-aging possibilities out there. Even before COVID, I had a, an early episode about how this might be an amazing way to get in and have fine-tuned control of our biology. And what you do with it, it, it's like having a shovel. You can do all sorts of stuff, dig holes and you know, make posts, whatever. So when people try to demonize it or say it, it's just a tool and you get to make what you want with it. So I, I'm all about changing my mitochondrial DNA to make them more effective. How long am I going to have to wait till I can literally recode my mitochondria? Give me a prediction. So CRISPR technologies, CRISPR is the technology, as you know, for being able to mm -hmm. precisely edit from a single nucleotide to a bunch of nucleotides in your yep. genome that won the Nobel Prize in 2020. It's been doubling in revenue every year. Jennifer Doudna uh, uh, from the UC system uh, won the Nobel Prize uh, with her partner on that. Um, we're seeing CRISPR trials today to cure a multitude of diseases, right? Cure beta thalassemia, cure sickle cell anemia. There's a trial to cure AIDS, HIV infections. And so it's a matter of um, when uh, uh, the right team is going to go and, and create that study. These are still expensive studies to be done uh, and they're going after the biggest diseases first. Um, and these are the diseases that are shortening life, not necessarily increasing your energy levels. But, you know, if I were a billionaire wanting to go after, you know, mitochondria, that'd be an incredible place to build a company. And one of the things I, I write about I'm in the book about is the amount of capital flowing into these areas right now is staggering, right? We saw Altos Labs with Jeff Bezos and Yuri Milner um, 
uh, really investing and committing billions of dollars. Hevolution Foundation out of Saudi Arabia and the Emirates uh, committing billions of dollars. We saw Brian Armstrong, the founder of Coinbase, uh, start a new company uh, called uh, New Limits. And it's just, I mean, my, my count, there are on the order of $10 billion a year being invested compared to the NIH, which invests like zero in, uh, in extending the healthy lifespan. Um, you know, this is, I think people have realized you can't take it with you. And it's the world's biggest market. I know a, a man or woman who has their health has a thousand dreams and the man or woman who does not has but one. I love that. I heard that first from Joe Polish. And, and so, you know, it's an extraordinary time and it's accelerating. The price of all the stuff is getting cheaper. The amount of capital is going up. The number of people experimenting is increasing and that's just driving this acceleration of the acceleration. Hey, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. It helps get the word out. And if you love the content that I talk about, present about, please subscribe to this channel. And one more thing, don't forget, please give me your comments down below. I love seeing what you think about all of this. We put a lot of time into it with incredible people and would love to have your feedback.